and we'll get into it a little bit later. But but I when I met you, really, I I think I'd seen you at different events and yeah. stuff. But when I really got to know you more is when I had my house on Fairfax. Yeah, and it was across the street. It was you. It was Jay. Yeah. It was uh, Mike Redhead. Yeah, big big Mike. Big Mikey, um, the creator of um, what's of Raya. Yeah. Uh, mo- mo- a lot of other things, and then and I, my buddy Trugman, but I don't know if Trugman was in your group. No, no, but Mil- Milanakis moved in when I moved out, and Milanakis. Yeah, it was a fun house. That was that four. Yeah, that yeah. Was- you guys had the house underneath the tree. Yeah. Now, how long were you guys there? I was there probably six months to a year. Yeah, because I had done. I was doing a bunch of movies. I was overseas, and when I came back, you guys were there for most of my run when I was overseas, and then. You were leaving, but you were there for like a month when I was there. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I mean, someone was telling me about because I think I saw McGinnis recently, mm-hmm. and we were talking about it. But when a bunch of oh no, it was Brian because my buddy Brian Milo lived with us too. Yeah. And one night these chicks rolled over, and we yeah. sent them over to your house. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they were like these like somehow I don't know who they were, but they just like these three girls like walked in the house. They're like, hey, we want to have an after party, and like everyone had kind of like settle down for the night and they yeah. were just wasted and we were like go across the street Jamie Kennedy's house there knock on the door go hang out with Jamie Jamie uh, <laughs> thank you you're welcome D- did they come over I believe they did <laughs> Do you know how he said you're getting old? You don't know what year you're at. It's it's. I'm getting really old when I don't remember which girls you sent over for the after party. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that special delivery. Yeah, no worries, no worries. That's, it was very neighborly, right? <laughs> Some people borrow eggs. Yep. Oh God. Well, I'll get canceled for that. Yeah, um, well, you know. Dude, it's so funny. Yeah, you your house was, it was fucking. It was wild, that place. Let's just say it was pre-social media. Yeah, pre-social media, pre-cell phone camera. Yeah. Like the living room was like a land center. It was just, it was just gaming computers and online poker and poker games. And mm-hmm. like we, McGinnis hooked it up to where we had a Red Bull sponsorship for the house. So like every yeah. month, like a truck of Red Bull would turn up and there was, it was always something going on. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah. And. I meet you there, and I and so then you had left, and I don't know. I think you left maybe to do your show yeah. or whatever. So, uh, I had no idea about how you are because how you were on TV and a little bit. I saw you over there, and then as I when I got met you again recently, we caught up. I had no idea you're you're like really are a outdoorsman. Yeah, I like, like you came off as like I'm not gonna talk. You came off as, you know, you had your glasses on. You were a Harry Potter. Yeah, I you know like, what I mean. Yeah, I was like a little douchey Beverly Hills kid. No, you weren't douchey, <laughs> but you were. I got you more. You had this beautiful diction and then this very big vocabulary and this wonderful <laughs> accent and like father. You know, I don't believe. And so Am- amongst all the swearing. Yeah, but you were like you know you were were like vest once in a while. I mean, <laughs> you were very you know you could I you could. Be be with the Duchess of York. I don't know about that. And you could also be on Skid Row. Not <laughs> you'd still be greatly dressed on Skid Row, but you could have conversations with anyone. Uh, I put you as one of these people that can survive anywhere in the world with talking with people. Yeah, I probably could. You're a world class talker. Uh, uh. And but but what's fascinating is I see I catch up with you again, and you've got guns, you've got ATVs, you've got bolo bow knives, you've got fucking <laughs> helicopter pad. I mean, like you're. <laughs> And you're like, yo, here's how you do a double sailor knot reverse loop. Like, <laughs> you're, I had no idea you did all yeah, this. Yeah. yeah when was, is this, when, was that at, at that part of your life? Yeah. So after the Osbournes, I went and did that show, Adrenaline Junkie. And it just kind of, it, it was kind of like, it was like college for me. All my friends went off to college and got like master's degrees and I filled up two passports. I went. The way and, to do it. Yep. I went everywhere and like, I, and I learned a lot about the outdoors, like really, you know. Were you that way before when you were like, daddy? I, well, my, my thing was before doing the show, like when I was probably until about 14 or 15, I was like, I'm just going to join. I wanted to join the army. That was like what I wanted to do. I kn- no, I got you as a beautiful, intellectual, <laughs> private school, very intelligent kid. That's how you came off. Yeah, and, and, and now and you're- that was season one, and then season like three, <laughs> two, and three, I was just like strung out on pills. 
but yeah. You know. Okay, listen, you you wanted to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. You know. Okay. So you but so but this whole outdoorsy this thing like you're yeah. a super like I'll call you about anything. If I was going to get a gun, I would ask you what oh, yeah. you If I wanted to set up a bug out house, I ask you. I mean, so you I if I ask you where well water is, you're going to tell me. <laughs> get the dowsing rods. Yeah. So <laughs> when it did so it happened around that time? Yeah. So like from from 19 to about 24, I traveled. I did a ton of I just got I got really in the outdoors. I was rock climbing climbing, mountaineering, you know, I mean, God, when I was 19, I, that the summer when I, between 19 and 20, I basically spent the whole summer in a tent. Like it was great. And I was like a full on climbing bum and it was awesome. I just really took a liking to like getting out there and experiencing the world and like doing crazy shit. And one thing just led to the other. And then, you know, I started shooting and then I did this, I did this show, um, in uh, Indiana, where I actually went to a police academy and became a cop, and then that kind of really got me into you know. You have your license in Indiana. I, I yeah, I'm actually I'm, I'm on a different department now. I'm kind of I'm inactive, but um, how yeah. long did it take to do that? Um, so what they did is when we were filming the show, they essentially took like a like a four month academy and slammed it into like three weeks straight. Like it was crazy. Like the amount of training we had to do in like three weeks to like meet all these hours and all these state mandate requirements when we did the show. Um, which was funny because the biggest complaint of the show was that when it aired, everyone thought we would, we were faking that we weren't actually cops. And we, we were like full on swan. This was in 2006. Never would the show happen today now, but they took a bunch of celebs and like put them through a police Academy. And yeah. So I, Wait, was that the Armed and Famous? Yes, that was. <laughs> yeah. You and Eric Estrada are yeah. cops. Yeah. Who else was on it again? What uh, girl? Uh, Latoya what? Jackson. <laughs> which which is kind of interesting because I- You I can kinda... pull that pillow back if you want. Oh, cool. What happened? You can take, throw it all off. Just get a little cozy. Get cozier. Um, yeah, so it was uh, yeah myself, Wee Man, Latoya Jackson, Eric Estrada. What a force. And Tristratus Stratus from WWE. Trish can handle it. Yeah. She yeah. can handle and it. And that was the thing. It was kind of like, it was like me and Trish and Wee Man were like the ones that like took it seriously. Okay. And you know, Wee Man's, he's a pro skater. That guy's an athlete. Yeah, for sure. Um, And so is Trish. Yeah. And Trish. Can, and Eric Estrada can handle himself. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He would yell at a lot of people. <laughs> no, Eric, Eric, Eric was great, man. He was, he was, it was a really, and even Latoya, like it was funny. Like I, I felt like I had a real kind of insight into the Jackson family because we like lived together for like four months in Indiana yeah in this hotel all of us did you not know the Jacksons before that I did of course I mean who doesn't know but like but you, did you I'm saying you would have more than an average person yeah I mean I mean I didn't know the, oh know them no I didn't know them on on that level or anything but it was uh it was it was cool like she was a really interesting woman and I met her she's sweet yeah 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 I had a, I mean it was a great time and I stayed on that department for years and then in, I think, 2014 or 15, no, I think it was 2015 or 16, I I, I let my credentials lapse, and then I, I joined a different department. See, that's crazy. Yeah. I would never know that. Dude, You, I could talk to you for hours because you're so smart, and <laughs> you're so worldly, <laughs> and you're so humble. Like, it's amazing. Like, and I don't want to go back to what we were saying is, I'm talking about your house and, and my house. Like, how, how, I was just talking to my buddy Stu. You know Stu? Stu. He used to rap with me back okay, in the yeah, day. Yeah, it, was yeah, like, yeah. it was Simon and Andy. Yeah. You know, Tom Green, me and Stu. There was like a bunch of different yeah. little crews. And we're like, he, we're like, yeah, pre MySpace. Yeah, pre MySpace. Like, I mean, life pre MySpace was a different, different world. Cause we were talking about, I was like, he was telling me about some people that we used to roll with. And he's like, well, that, that guy's in, in jail for uh fraud. The other guy goes like, cause, do you remember like we invest in all these restaurants Yep. and you'd get a little piece and you'd walk in and say, I have a piece of a restaurant, table eight, yeah. Geisha house. Yeah. So I'm sure you were my, were invested in some of the similar ones. So yeah. Geisha house was our go-to. Uh -huh. Do you remember that? Of course. And yeah. then we would go to mood. Mm-hmm. And Dude. then and <laughs> LAX, oh God, Las Palmas, yeah. and Suck Sung would run it. God bless his soul, pours him out. Like, yeah. I mean, and then the after parties, and so yeah, the weird the house all the way at the top on Hollywood, the yes. one that they filmed in uh, "I Love You, Man." Yeah, there was so many after parties in that house. Dude, 
it was like, because you would go, you would pig out on sushi, and then you'd get a discount for investing in this restaurant. Yeah. But you would get, like, the best service and be like, hey, it's a piece of my restaurant. Ashton had a piece. A lot of people, yeah. you had a piece. Yeah. And then you'd go to the mood, or you would go to Le Do. Le Do. Le Don't. Yep. And it's supposed to close at two, but they'll keep the back group open until four. Mm -hmm. And then we would go to that house at four, and you come up. And then you end up at Swingers eating eggs. Yes, yeah, seven and, in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and no, and everyone had a great life. And there was no pictures, none, no evidence, none. It was great. And he said evidence, not like anything was bad, <laughs> but just digital footprint. Yeah. And there was no. I hate this world. It was no clout. No, and it was because people were having fun just to have fun, yes. not to take pictures of it and post it. Like, yeah, it's like no, just fucking go and have fun. I, this is how I look at Hollywood. I mean, there's a lot of things, but in this little part of it, I'll say this. Hollywood was, yes, Hollywood has a lot of issues. Yeah, of course. Okay. And it has to get better. And it is being shooken out now like a rug. Yeah. Which it should be. But there was a beautiful little group of people mm -hmm. that wanted to have the most fun they could ever have. Yeah. And not illegal and not amoral. Maybe some people would think it's amoral, yeah. you know, but it's not bad. No. And we just, you know, no one wanted to fucking know but it got infiltrated. But what I with, with social media, it got infiltrated by these, what I call reporters. Mm -hmm. And so they were people that are always involved, but they were also starting to document it. Yes. And for, by doing that, they had no singing, dancing, writing, whatever. Their talent was exposing. Yes. And you can expose if something's bad all day. But it was like, hey, aren't I cool? And to make myself look better, look at this person messing up. Yeah. You know what I think is funny is like, you know, and you kind of go down like some of the YouTube rabbit holes and it's whether it's like Alex Jones talking about and the Satanists in Hollywood. Like good impression. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming for your babies. The frogs are gay now. Yeah. <laughs> um, it like I have never seen. And you would think, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you would think, oh, Ozzy Osbourne, Jack Osbourne. Like, if there's some weird satanic shit in Hollywood, like, let's invite them. I never saw anything fucking dark like that. I never saw anything fucking Illuminati. I never saw any of that shit. Now, I found myself in places where you're like, these fucking people are shady. But there's not some, like, organized cabal that's, like, operating within the shadows that I have ever seen. That you've ever seen. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying there absolutely isn't, but I yes. never fucking, I don't know if you ever saw it. I have never seen anything like that. I always tell people I saw people having a good time, yeah. but I never went to a mansion and saw, or open up, what's behind door number one? What's behind door? No. Yeah. I never saw that. Like, I, I, and I tell people this multiple times. Every time I went to the Playboy Mansion, it was like magic. It was so much fun. It was like, listen. The the numbers are incredible. It's six to one. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a dude, I can never bring another dude. That's how I got to kind of know Chris Evans. I don't really know him that well now, but like I was like my own thing. We can never bring a friend. I don't know yeah. if you had that pass. Yeah. So you would meet other famous young dudes. <laughs> You'd up get there. on the bus with everyone. A hundred percent. And you just sat there like, oh hey, do you want to like hang out? But if you're a dime from Iowa. Yeah. Then you have to send them pictures and have other dimes from Iowa. Yeah. And that's how it works. So yeah. seven girls show up that are absolutely beautiful, but they're fully clothed. Are they, are they, is it sexy? Where? Yeah. Sure. But not, they're not walking around naked. And if the ones that were, they had the paint, they had the body paint yes! on. Yes. And there's pillows. It's like Arabian Nights. The food and was good. Hookahs. And if you want to smoke a joint, the best drinks, apple martinis. Yeah. And then at two o'clock, they rolled out the next at prime rib table. And it would be that. And too short, be on the mic. And it was the best. You yeah. never felt like you were being kicked out. No. And I've never, did, did I had a good times there? Yes. Was it a fucking Bacchanal? No way. No. No. It's like if people did go and hook up, it probably was somewhere private, but they kind of frowned on that. They yeah. wanted you to go off premises. Yeah, they were like, yeah, this isn't a, it was not a sex club. It was no. not like one of those like weird like. And if there was drugs, it was like maybe people were doing coke and stuff, I'm sure, and pills, but it wasn't like people were doing crazy hardcore drugs. No, no. And it was a feel good. Yeah. So go. And if you pulled out a camera, you were out. Ow! 
out. They would take the camera and you were fucking gone. Gone. The yeah. way it should be. Because you'd have Herbie Hancock over here. You would have Too Short over here. You would have you. You'd see Bill Maher. Yeah. You would see, and I'm not going to A-lister, you'd see Clooney. I mean, yeah. there's nothing bad. Everyone yeah. was just enjoying their life. Yeah. And the best parties were obviously Midsummer's because it was a half Sanction party that and Halloween yeah are that, the only parties they were the only ones I'd go to yeah but you know sometimes the off nights yeah you know why not hey there's <laughs> a party let's go Geico rented it out I just remember when I was I cause I started going to them when I was like maybe sixteen or seven I thought you had said when I was six no when I was I was yeah, I was a teenager and I remember being like hey. You got an invite to a Playboy party, and I was like, "What? Yeah, yeah. oh my god, I, yeah. this is it! I've made it!" Yeah, it's it was incredible. It was Jennifer. God, God bless her, wherever she 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 was the liaison. Yeah. So going back to what we were talking about, yeah, if anyone was going to go to invite to the Satanist, I mean, people think that Satan. And your dad, your dad's kind of like totally, his right? homeboy, yeah. his right hand. You would think so, like that there would be some invite. <laughs> yeah. So I never, no, I never, but ha, did you hear, of, there's definitely Satanists in Hollywood. Yeah, for Do sure. Do I know it? I'm, I always tell people I've met like a couple and they were low key, but they were just like people that were like, yeah. Weird I'm, golf kids. Yes, ex exactly. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't anything weird and it was, their whole thing was like, just do what you want. Yeah. Don't hurt it. But they were like, don't hurt anybody. Yeah. And so there's all these other things that people say about what Satanism is. But going back to that, it's like, yeah, I never saw anything weird either. It does not mean it doesn't exist. And it doesn't mean you haven't heard. Yeah. You do hear of like, you know, there are people that fucking do a little bloodletting. Yeah. You have heard of that. Totally. But and there and listen, and there was and there was always rumors of the rapey dudes. And that was I, yeah, like guys who are fucking just just he, scumbags. Yeah, scumbags. It wasn't like like he's a rapist, but he's like there, it's there's smoke around him. I yeah. would say yeah, yeah. And that's you know, and it's, and it's one of those things where I think that's that's in any fucking industry though. Mm -hmm. Every any like Wall Street, there's fucking creepy. Oh dudes. fuck, like, dude. DC, there's we know there's creepy dudes. It's fuck. like. The auto industry, that's it's like every industry is gonna have creepy dudes. But I always say people like, you know, I'll I'll use your family as an example, and then uh, like, and then me and and, and stuff is like, it, it's not it, Hollywood is <clears throat> is has its issues, but the craziest I ever saw the Playboy Mansion were the nights they would rent it out, and I would go to those parties once in a while. To corporate events. Yeah. Those people never get to let the fucking smoke out of the kitchen. And so when they would do, they would go batshit. Yeah. So that's like Wall Street people are fucking insane because they're pent up all day. Yeah. Uh, fucking, like you said, other industries, like medical people. <laughs> right. So Hollywood, we kind of live more ch because we get to have such a less judgmental corporate life. Yeah. We don't have to rage. Every, you know, we don't have a, a, a time where we can rage and that's it. So that's why I say that Hollywood kind of certainly gets a little bit of a bad rap because it's bad. It's not as great as, as, as it wants to believe, but it's not as terrible as like other places. Totally. I always, and you know, it's when, you know, when you go back to the kind of Alex Jonesy shit and he's talking about, you know. You like that. Dude, oh, I, I, I love, love, I love dude, that rabbit yeah. hole too. I'm with you, bro. Dude. I can't you know, tell how much I like And they're talking about, you know. Beyonce and and Jay Z being in the Illuminati and there's all these like rap artists now who are like claiming that I'm like clones. No, it's like when you're in fucking Hollywood, when you have a job in the entertainment industry, you work for someone. You're not the boss. Like Jay Z gets paid by someone. Mm -hmm. He's working for someone. Mm -hmm. Like there's a record label. There's a, a, you know his an, an endorsement or whatever. It's like no, like the people that are really running shit are the ones paying everyone you think is running shit. Agreed. The people that are really running shit, we don't see. No. But I will say, that the Balenciaga thing is very strange. That's fucking weird. That's some weird shit. And, I, and to that point, the, some of the weirdest shit that I've seen has always been around the fashion world. Oh, God, dude. That, to me, is like, huh, like that. I, and art. Yep. Art and fashion. Because there's no super barrier to entry. I thought comedy had no barrier to entry, but there's no money in it until you blow up. Yeah. Art, people can be so weird and creepy, but if, they, if someone deems their piece genius, in six months, someone could be fucking Basquiat. Yeah, totally. And you can launder so much money through art. Oh, my God. And yeah. fashion, for sure. Those fucking young models and those creepy fucking Euro trashers. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I agree. I think that's the darkest... Yeah. It might be darker than the music business. Totally. 
And, you know, and then, and then when you really start getting down to it, you start thinking about, you know, so much of like, you know, progressive Hollywood is like, oh, fashion and art and this and that. And, but they're all eco warriors, but yet they they love fashion. And I'm like, the fashion industry is literally the most like uneco friendly fucking industry in the world. Every, what, three to six months, you have to get new clothes to be relevant. <laughs> Dude, it's so true. It's like what happens to all that clothes, which are perfectly fine. Yes. But in six months, you have to throw it out. You cannot be seen in it again. And they're not exactly made under the best conditions. No. And the best labor practices. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, hypocrisy about. Oh my god, that's well, yeah, that's the that's my that's the thing that I think for me I despise most about Hollywood is the hypocrisy. Oh. It there were times where it was fun, but right now it's just the most hypocritical up its own ass like we know better it's like pfft, please 